Good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Infrastructure Safety and Growth Screening Committee. Um, first item on the agenda are apologies. Um, I have apologies from Councillor Dan Maycock and we have Councillor Andrew Cooper sitting in as his uh, substitute. I have apologies from Councillor Paul Turner and Councillor Cherie People. Um, Councillor Stephen Doyle was going to be here with regard to the recycling update. He's, he has sent his apologies also. Are there any other apologies? No, excellent. Okay. Uh, item two on the agenda is appointment of a vice chair. So, can I have nominations for uh, vice chair, Andrew? Uh, thanks, chair. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Paul Turner for the uh, role of vice chair, vice sec. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Excellent. Um, do we have any further uh, nominations? No? Okay, so we'll just take a vote on that. All those in favour? Excellent. Thank you. Um, Councillor Paul Turner is Vice Chair, even though he's not here. <laughs> um, so, item three is minutes of the previous meeting of the 22nd of November. Um, have a mover, please. John, Ben seconded. All those in favour? Excellent. Um, item four are declarations of interests. Do we have uh, any declarations? Excellent. Uh, item five is an update from me. I do not have a, an update on anything other than things that may be covered within the work plan later on. So, item six are responses to reports of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. So, since the last meeting, um, the committee's recommendations on the transport integration update were taken to Cabinet. And Cabinet supported the recommendation and resolved that uh, agreed to task relevant officers to liaise with partner organisations to identify any funding sources for the development of additional public transport links within the borough and also uh, agreed that within, with immediate effect that the report is referred to the County Council's Prosperous Staffordshire Scrutiny Committee requesting they carry out a feasibility study into public transport opportunities to benefit wider Staffordshire. Um, I think that was something that Councillor Ford was going to take to, um, to, to County. Um, and... and um, I think it was, we've got uh, the leader with us. I don't know if he could uh, he could actually take that to county as a as a county councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wasn't quite expecting to be called in this early in the meeting. Um, no, that that recommendation will notify uh, the county council uh, through a democratic process. Uh, the chairman of that particular scrutiny committee is a member of Tamworth Borough Council as well. Uh, so uh, Councillor Clements will be picking that up when it comes through the, the county system. So rest assured that will be picked up because, as you know, Councillor Clements will, will represent Tamworth at every opportunity. Excellent. Th th thanks very much for that uh, clarity. Um, OK, so item seven are considerations of matters referred to infrastructure safety and group, uh, growth from Cabinet or Council, and there's been none. So we move on to... Um, our first sort of uh, item on the agenda that's, uh, that, that involves officers. So, renewal of the Public Space Protection Order Access Road to Dostal Hall. And I'll bring Jo Sanders in to present this, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, members all um, recall um, the process around Public Space Protection Orders um, under the Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act 2014. Um, the public space protection order is in place um, to prohibit or um, put conditions on behaviour likely to cause a detriment um, to the public place. The order at Dost Hill, the last time the um, public consultation was made was December 2019 for um, an order to carry on for three years. That order expires on the 31st of January um, and after consultation with the police and with um, ward councillors, um, the requests from the police and partners is that order is kept in place. Um, the order has seen 
a dramatic drop in antisocial behaviour at that particular place. Um, and the, it is felt that the continuing use of a public space protection order there is a deterrent and allows police officers to warn or actually actively engage with people there. So the proposal is that the scrutiny committee um, approves delegation to the portfolio holder, voluntary sector, town centre, evening economy and community safety for the extension of that order at Dostill Park um, for a further three years until January 2026. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, I, I have a couple of comments, but I'll just bring in uh, uh, the, uh, the rest of the committee if they have any questions or comments on it. Ben. Thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, uh, basically to say um, I'll, I'll happily move the recommendation. Um, <clears throat> the report covers everything. Um, I no questions on it. I think we've, we've used these in other places to good effect. Um, by the sounds of it, this has done the same thing. So I'll be happy to move that, Chair. Thank, thanks, Ben. John? Absolutely agree. Uh, it's a no-brainer. It's mm. just simply, yes, it's doing its job. Uh, why stop it? Carry on. It's needed. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. And just just to add for myself, um, I think in general PSPOs um, around the town do do a do a fantastic job. They um, they really um, make a difference. Um, and I think where possible, we we need to keep keep them going. Um, and and the, this one in particular, the evidence just goes to show that it's doing its job so uh um so i asked for a mover john ben second so uh th this is to approve delegation to the portfolio holder voluntary sector e evening economy and community safety for the extension of this uh Dostal park pspo so all those in favor excellent thank you very much um thank you joe no, nice and quick for you. You can happy. You can you can happy to happy for you to go and do some singing or or whatever you. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, item nine is uh, future high streets fund quarterly update. So uh, members will know this is something that we agreed for uh, for an update on a quarterly basis. And uh, I know a, a report has been circulated, but I'll introduce uh, Councillor Oates to uh, kick off. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, yeah, Future High Street Fund, um, as you know, we've reported back to you quarterly uh, since, since we started this. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a quick update, uh, but the, the headlines are we are progressing well, we're where we should be, uh, and uh, and I'll just take this opportunity to not only thank uh, the, the project team, uh, particularly the, the two people on my right-hand side who are going to carry me through this meeting, um, but all those who have, who have been involved in the project, and just remind ourselves that we kicked this off way back in late 2018, 2019, uh, when, when we originally submitted our expression of interest. So, so, so whilst we're looking at looming deadlines, uh, and, and we haven't got much time left, actually, a whole host of work has been done by that project team uh, and everyone involved in, in, in those years to get us to, to the stage right now. Um, and I think the fact that we're, we're where we should be in terms of the project is testament to, to the project team, but I think it's also testament to the, the way we've approached it as elected members. Um, we have a, a slightly different board structure than what we've had with previous projects. Uh, some members are involved at every step of the way. Uh, it's been through scrutiny more times than I can count on one hand. Uh, and it's also been a, an audit and governance subgroup which has addressed the risk. Uh, so, so it's put us in a, in a reasonably good position. Uh, and it's where we should be right now. Uh, so that's enough of the, the waffly introduction. Um, in terms of the, the projects themselves, the college quarter, as you'll see in the report, uh, is progressing as should be. Uh, planning application uh, was successful through the planning committee uh, last year, uh, and the college have procured uh, a successful contractor for the new build. Uh, now, this is important to note that the college have done that because the college are building the college. Tamworth Council is not building a new college, the, the, the college is. 
However, we are demolishing the old 1960s retail block of the co-op. Uh, and Armac have, uh, have already started that, and you'll notice the hoarding uh, has, uh, and the scaffolding has gone around, uh, around that building. Um, so, so there's there's significant change now. You can see in the public realm that we're we're getting on with the project, and the, uh, and, and a lot of the planning stage has has come to an end. Uh, so the report also explains uh, the tender for the main works of the enterprise centre, uh, and I'm going to ask the officers to give a quick update on that. Uh, albeit it falls slightly outside of this report because this report was written beforehand. We're now at the point where it does express uh, it does explain in the report that the second week of january so i'm going to ask for a, a quick update from officers to to the committee on on that one uh, and just the, another one while we look at the college quarter and extend that into the st Edith square area uh, you'll all be aware that the the canopy uh, has been removed having been there for uh well since 2007 2008 it was something like that wasn't it uh, so significant long, uh, length of time so that's been removed and that's allowed uh, our landscape architects to, to have a look at the area and produce some final designs uh, which make that space a, a usable space includes uh, the opportunity for markets but includes the opportunity for for other arts and events uh, so it really just enhances that that whole area uh, which is exactly where we where we originally wanted to, to go with that so moving on to to middle entry uh, you'll be aware that these units uh, have, have now been acquired and I think that was the case at the last meeting actually I think we were just on the I think the, the timing drop that we just acquired them um, so uh, our, many members will be aware that the plan application was submitted uh, for the flex units at this this end of middle entry uh, and that went through that was approved by the planning committee only last night so hot off the press that has been approved uh, so we can we can start to start to proceed with that uh, and again, those same architects that uh, are looking at St. Edith Square are also looking at that bit of public space that will now be at the rear of the town hall and in front of those new units uh, once the old ones have come down and that space has been opened up uh, as, a, as a usable space. Uh, the report then goes on to, to explain the, the uh, Castle Gateway area. Uh, so we know the works that are going on with the, the Peel Cafe. Uh, they were updated last time. Uh, We've also had some updates uh, in regards to the structure of the units, uh, the old shop units that have been closed since the 80s. Uh, so progress, while slow is being made on those because we've got to get things right. We've, we've got to, not only uh, legal duties, but we've got a duty of, of care and responsibility uh, in, terms of, in terms of protecting those as assets and, and bringing them back into use. And there's some challenges with those just purely because of the age uh, and the stuff that we're finding with the with the different surveys, uh, so so we, we are cracking on with that work, uh, but it's uh, it, it's progressing as we expected it to, and as we fed back not the last update but the previous one, uh, when we'd had our first timber surveys uh, started. So so we, we're we're still on the same timeline as as we were there, um, and the the last significant part is the sorry before I move to the last significant part the. Um, Public realm area, as noted in the uh, in the papers here, um, will involve some adoption, etc., around county highways. Not necessarily for scrutiny this evening, but with my other hat on as a county councillor, this falls within my patch. So, just inform the committee that I've used some of my divisional highways plan money uh, to ask for a, a review of the current traffic restriction orders uh, and stopping orders, stopping up orders that are in the town centre. Uh, to give a to give a highways picture as to what's going on there, so that sits outside the future high street fund project, but will feed in. That information will be fit, will feed in and will, and will be useful. So, so that's just a, a note on the side for that one. Um, and the bridge widening, we now have uh, Western Power Distributions uh, agreement uh, that we can uh, deal with their cables uh, and replace the bridge, and we can hang their cables on on the bottom of those. Now, significantly, this was raised at the last scrutiny committee that we came to, and probably the one before, I can't exactly remember. Um, we are looking at those plans between September and November, and we are aware that that puts significant pressure on us in terms of slotting in with outdoor events and a busy time period uh, of, of the year. Uh, so we're aware of that, and, and conversations are happening with, uh, with the arts and events teams and, and others as to how we can best deliver that uh, with the minimum minimum impact on on their 
on, on, on their projects and their, their events. Uh, so that pretty much concludes uh, the, the progress update. Uh, businesses that are directly affected are still being communicated with directly uh, with some uh, additional monthly sessions. Uh, and also the TBC comms team uh, are liaising with the college uh, in terms of the new build of, uh, of their college building uh, and getting some information out as the progress on that. Uh, and I repeat what I said earlier, the college of building the college so we're working with them to ensure that the right messages are going out from the college and we're not uh, and we're not fielding questions on their project you know um, in terms of budget and time scales as i said earlier we're about where we where we should be based on the last update you had um, so there's nothing that's jumping out at that as a uh, as a red flag at the moment um, we we are carefully watching um, the market situation uh, in terms of supplies and construction and that's been fed back and updated every time we have a, a board meeting so the project team are, uh, are all over that uh, so we can head off things as they come along uh, and you'll notice um, whilst we've got uh, whilst we've got those figures in, in here uh, you'll notice how as we've progressed and given updates to this committee uh, designs have changed and there's been alterations and part of that has been cost driven so we can still deliver the outcomes that we need to deliver uh, and we can still deliver that within within a reasonable cost envelope so so you know th things have had to change as we've gone along uh, but we've been able to to keep it on track uh, and keep it where it should be so that's all i've got to add if uh, anna or alice could uh, give us an update on the um on the second week of january the tendering stuff Um, so thank you for that. Um, so we had program board, which we meet on, on a monthly basis, and that was last week. Um, the the so pr primary outputs of that board was to um, agree to the appointment of a, a contractor. Um, we've been through a tendering process from December through into January with uh, evaluations undertaken uh, about a week, week and a half ago. Um, we went through a framework, CWM framework, <laughs> Um, specific lots and um, there were four contractors who we went to who were relevant to the particular scale and sort of complexity of the project and having gone through that tendering process um, we are now in a position to go to one particular contractor um, we have an inception meeting with them tomorrow so we're trying to move forwards now as quickly as possible um, there's still a lot to do um, we have to sort of enter into negotiations around a lot of logistics around how we're going to deliver the project, um, also looking at timescales and costs, etc. But we're in a really good place. Uh, we have got someone interested in delivering um, the Future High Streets Fund programme. So, you know, there's a huge amount of relief that goes with that. So the tendering process and the structure of that tendering process, we're looking at the um, sort of refurbishment of the Enterprise Centre, we're looking at um, demolition and new build of the flexible space with the obviously the removal of the canopy. And we're also looking at the, the renovation of the Peel Cafe. So those are the three projects that were essentially tendered for um, we're going to move into negotiations on. But the way we've structured the tender, we can if they prove to be really good contractors that we get on with and they we you know we all get on and comply with each other's policies, etc., get a good feeling for them. There's more work there as we move through the rest of the projects. So we've got Castle Gateway um, and potentially also Market Street as well. So we've kind of left it a little bit open-ended. They could move into those projects uh, or equally, um, if we want to, we can move to a different contractor and, and tend and procure that all over again. So yeah, so the key output was Programme Board um, have agreed to the appointment of a specific contractor, which allows us now to move from planning into delivery, which is a really exciting place to be. Thank you. Thanks, Anna and Jeremy. Um, questions or comments from John? Hi, uh, hi guys. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the report. That's that's great to, to hear. I wonder if though you could firm up some of the timescales, or I know it's difficult when you've only got contractors or you're in the process of doing it. But what are your aims? For instance, uh, the college is is now underway. Demolition is going ahead. Presumably, as soon as that is done, um, from what I understand. 
uh, a new build will start immediately and the college will be ready for September next year, is that correct? Hello. So, yes, yep. we're aiming to finish the demolition of the co-op retail store in March for direct handover to the college. They'll start their build imminently. Obviously, for the college, it's their priority to be over by yep. September. <clears throat> that's, you know, that's something that our demo contractors are completely aware of. With regards to the rest of the program, we have a desired program and timeline. However, we need to get into those negotiations with our contractor and find out what's reasonable. They've been very upfront and honest about what they think the site challenges are, and they actually came prepared with a program that seemed very deliverable and gave us a lot of reassurance that we'll be able to draw down, you know, in line with what was agreed for the government funding. Yeah. So when can we? When do you anticipate demolition to start on the buildings um, where the flexi building is going to go? When can you see that? We think closer to the summer of this year. Towards the summer. Mm -hmm. And how about the timescale for the nationwide moving in? Because the original timescale, I was told, was March of this year, which obviously isn't going to happen. Um, when is that now? Is there some sort of a date or some sort of a time when nationwide are looking to transfer over to the, the new building? There isn't a specific date, but logic follows that they can't move from building A until building B, i.e. the Peel Cafe, is ready for them to move in. Again, we've had routine and regular updates with Nationwide on what we think the projected timescale could be. But again, we're waiting on that contractor input. Hmm. We keep them in the loop throughout so they'll know roughly when we think they should be in. And again, hmm. like I say, they can't move until that building is done. But obviously you're going to be looking at um, putting the gateway project into uh, operation and they'll need to be out by by then so have you got any idea when your gateway project is likely to be uh, undertaken I don't have exact dates for you I'm but not looking again, for exact it's with just... with the bridge itself that's something that can be done independently whether or not nationwide is up or down at that point so that's something to think about, that we can deliver that particular portion of it in terms of the landscaping around that area, which actually isn't part of Future High Street Fund, it's something slightly surplus to it. We can do that when that building is down. And again, the transfer from building A to building B will be done at the point that the Peel Cafe is ready. But again, we're still kind of crossing the T's and dotting the I's in terms of the legal agreement with Nationwide per the report. And again, we have constant and regular contact with that team over what we anticipate to be the moving dates. As I said, we have dates in mind for that, but what's actually feasible from the contractor's point of view may be a slightly different thing. I think mm -hmm. by the time we come to this next committee, the next quarter, yeah. we will have a defined date for you. Right, that would be very helpful. But um, you're, you're confident that you've got the right people uh, in place, in situ, to carry out the necessary demolition, construction, and uh, that, that it's going to go ahead smoothly? Um, I would say yes. Actually, we're really pleased with the way that the procurement has progressed and the conclusion that we've got to and who we will be appointing. Um, we've met them once already, and we do get a lot of reassurances from them. They absolutely know their stuff. And they came with lots of ideas and lots of questions and lots of queries. So they, they've already put a lot of work into thinking around how we are going to deliver these logistically very tricky projects that will all be going on all at the same time within a very small town centre. So I think they're, they're really prepared. But what, what I would also say is that um, they are very passionate about what they do. And they, they really want this work and they want to do it well. There's a real sense of pride in, in, in how they operate and how they speak to us. So um, I'm really hopeful. And um, like I said, we're incepting with them tomorrow. And I think we're all looking forward to it. Right. I'm, I'm sure we're all very reassured by your confidence. Uh, that's good to hear. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, John. Andy. Thanks, Chair. Um, three things. Um, 
then it, it's good to hear that the, so the first one is really good to hear that we, we've got somebody on board they seem really keen and, and ambitious to get on that's really good to hear um i think if i cast my mind back to the sort of latter part of 2020 we were presented with a bit of a gantt chart showing a, a tracking project timeline i think um, i'd like to make a recommendation that that is brought back to um, this committee so that we can see the, the, the dates that Councillor Harper is concerned with and how that's slipping and certain important stage gates that are, that are in place there. I'm not sure if that's that's ready to go and, and bring in, but that, I think that, that would be a good thing just to visualise that timeline. I think the next committee is, is actually programmed for something like June, which I think gives us quite... Is, or is it April? It would be probably June because I don't think we have a scheduled meeting in April, so it yeah. probably would be June-ish. So I, I can I, I, yeah. I can agree to that. Um, like I say, we've already got um, a Gantt chart from the contractors. They've already come prepared and have already sort of program managed the projects and how they interact with the with the milestones and the gateways, like like you're saying. Um, but they've also made a lot of assumptions with that um, timeline. And the negotiations that we're going to be starting tomorrow is that actually we've done some of the work that they've assumed. So I think, if anything, the timelines that they've set out will be pulled in and will be starting a bit sooner than perhaps they've already presented to us. So I think having gone through the next couple of months and firmed up, and done a bit of extra work, so we still need to do some opening up works, a few more survey works, um, looking at some of the logistics around um, some of the trickier buildings and demolitions, etc. I think we will be in a position to do that. Yeah. Right, thanks, Anna. Just bring uh, Andrew in. Yeah, I mean, th th thanks, Chair. I, th I think th the answer to, to both questions is yes. Um, the most important thing at the moment is to finalise the contractual arrangements. Um, part of that is to agree a timeline project specific timeline that's once that is done contract will then produce all the, the necessary um i think there's no issues with that being circulated to uh, to committee in fact i think we should make um you know part of our our communication strategy to the town needs to be to to communicate that uh, as well because obviously it, it affects everybody in the town so to, to do it tonight i think will perhaps be a bit folly because you know we're not in contract we haven't agreed a timeline yet so we, we know what we'd like, we know what the contractor would like, the, the reality is probably somewhere between those. Um, so I, I think if that gives a bit of reassurance that, um, you know, it, it will happen, it's just timing is, as I say, time is everything. Thanks. Yeah, just conscious that obviously poor Alice is being asked for certain dates, it, just to have, you know, a, a nice sort of simplified uh, Gantt chart that we can, we can disseminate between ourselves and the public would be great. Um, the last thing I would like to say is, um, would it be possible to get some form of uh, video footage of, of, of the work happening? Because that would be great to share, you know, these, we do it at work all with these, these time motion, you know, where you can speed it up and you see all the great work that's happening because most people will come into this town and see these things happening on a day by day weekly basis and they won't realize the actual impact but something like a two minute video showing the the scale of what we're doing it's really hard hitting yeah we've we've put time lapse cameras up around the town already um the, the first one was erected in st editha square just prior to the canopy being removed to capture that particular sort of historic action along with the hoarding also being erected around the, the co-op building, the former co-op building. So um, I, I don't know the specifics of the tender, but we do get at the end of it, like a couple of minutes video showing all the activity the progress, yeah. um, and showing progress. So yeah, that's being done. Yeah, I think that, I think that, that'd be great actually. I think that's, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad that is happening. Yeah. Um, a couple of other comments from me. Um, one, seeing the canopy, disappear from St. Ed of the Square, I think is, um, for me, it's just reveals such a massive space. And I think um, that's going to be usable. Uh, and I, th I think that's, that's, for me, it's really pleasing to see. Um, Jeremy, you mentioned the uh, in the report, the, the bridge work, September to November. And uh, kind of the risk with regard to out, outdoor events and I just wondered if we could explore that a little bit more because you know we 
obviously fireworks is the thing that sort of comes to mind initially and um, the thousands of people that we welcome to town uh, which could be impacted and I just wondered what we were doing to uh, mitigate that. Thank you. I think um, Alex is desperate like she is every time we do a scrutiny committee so I'm going to hand over in a second. Um, see she went for it again then. Um, <laughs> Yes, we are conscious of it and we're, we're having those discussions. Uh, as Alice said, we, we can put the bridge in uh, independent of other, other works. Um, but while, whilst we look at the Wheel of Tamworth event uh, and that sort of time period, uh, September, and we look at the fireworks in November, we should never lose sight of actually that is a main thoroughfare every day of the week. And, and thousands of people will, uh, whether, whether they're local or visitors, will use that to access the town centre. Um, so, so it's not just the events where we have the tens of thousands. It's on a daily basis. We need to we need to reduce the the, the time that that bridge is closed um, and maintain as much access uh, as, as possible throughout that whole period, uh, whether there's events on or not. Alice, just to provide a bit of reassurance that we are actually liaising with arts and events. I think it's in the report somewhere about fireworks and our other key events. I had an email literally yesterday about. The light switch on for next year already so we are already thinking about these things alternative routes alternative locations for things like christmas light switch on it's all in hand quite far in advance so obviously far be it from me to talk about you know diversions of routes and things like that that's not our expertise it's up to arts and events but like i say they've had the early engagement from us and they they are capable of, of replanning around it yeah yeah, thank thank you. I, I didn't doubt at all that it wasn't uh, it wasn't in hand and was being planned. Um, I, th I just think it's important that um, if 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 it can be avoided any clash with with any events, I think I think that should be really considered. Um, and then just one one other um, mention with regard to comms. Um, I do think it's very important we, we just do keep uh, our residents informed um, uh, of, of what's happening and I guess coming back to the, the time-lapse video if if any of those sort of portions can be released before the end of the project I think that that might be quite uh, a useful tool um, any other Michelle Thank you, and apologies for being late. Um, just a, well, a couple, quick a couple of points. Um, first of all, I'll just kind of go back to what you said um, about kind of the communications, etc. Especially when people are planning their, let's, I'll say, activities, and when they're going, actually, we won't go to Tamworth because we know there's all those works going on as early as possible. To actually say that kind of these are the big highlights that are still happening, etc is really important because people do make decisions and book things well in advance. So the earlier that we can communicate that, that would be brilliant. Um, it's fantastic that this kind of got planning permission last night. So it's a great kind of uh, next stage kind of moving forward. Really, really good. Just one quick thing on budgets um, that's in here. And I've looked back over the last couple of quarter reports. Whilst it makes reference to the fact that we've got the two million pound in contingency funds, tonight and apologies if this was mentioned before I walked into the room um, but it's got forecast current construction costs are two million higher than expected due to inflation how much has that changed since the last update I was it around that last time or has it spiked and if so what's the future pressure because construction costs do not seem to be going down anytime soon thanks so they won't be too different to the last report that we had, which I think was the same kind of cost stage report based on the designs that we had at that time, which haven't really shifted. They were still from stage three. The thing to know, and I'm not sure if, if we've made this clear enough, with the uh, contractor that we're bringing on board for at least three of the projects, excluding Market Street and Castle Gateway, um, the kind of live pricing, so to speak, will reveal what we will actually spend and that will be based on supply chain and the risks within that, which obviously the contractor will have experience pricing. They know how to, to work their way around that for the best quality and the best price. So that's 
something to bear in mind. And again, I know it doesn't sound great saying, oh, by the next meeting we'll have this, but we should have a much better, uh, clearer picture of what the costs will actually be. Um, but no, they haven't really shifted since the last report. And second to that, I think we just need to be mindful that there might be things that come in slightly cheaper than expected. There might be things that come in slightly more expensive. For example, you know, we had a talk with Nationwide recently about what their projected costs are. We gave them a certain cap on what we were willing to spend. And at the moment, they're projecting below. So there are other streams potentially where we may be able to to recover. But yeah. Uh, just bring Jeremy in. Uh, yeah, um, and I think, oh, sorry, okay. Yeah, come and show. Um, I, I think it was uh, just before you arrived, uh, I did mention that as we've gone through the project, uh, when we got to the, certainly the stage three with design, we've cut out a lot of the, of the additional cost in construction at that stage. So, so we've, we've refined the designs <laughs> in order to make them more affordable. So we're still achieving what we want to achieve in terms of, we'll use the flex as an example, the units are the same size, however the frontages are different to the initial artist impression, and that's allowed us uh, not to make savings, but to come in uh, uh, against that budget. So we, so we mitigated that uh, uh, along the way. Um, just picking up on the other point uh, you made about early communications, um, I think there's, there's two parts to that. I completely agree, uh, early comms, uh, it needs to go out, especially if we're if we're attracting people to come. Uh, say, for example, we want people to get married here. You know, it's it's uh, a twelve month. Generally, people plan twelve months ahead, um, but also we, we need to follow that up with repeat com communications. Uh, sitting here in in January, saying we're going to do this in in September November. By September November, a lot of people will have either missed that message in January or forgotten about it. So so it's. I think you're absolutely right. We need early comms, and we need to keep repeating those communications as as to what what's happening when. Michelle, do you have uh, any? Okay, uh, John. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Earlier today, I spent most of this, this morning uh, having a chat with our assets manager, <coughs> Paul Weston. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, chat and very useful for me personally but one of the things we we discussed um were the buildings next door to the nationwide that three or four buildings i'm not sure I've, three, whatever um which are in a parlor state of repair and need obviously a considerable amount of money spending on them to bring them back into some sort of um, positive use. Uh, one of the, the discussions we had was on designating them, those buildings, those council and buildings, as a heritage asset. Um, to do this, they're currently uh, regarded as commercial uh, buildings and obviously uh, available for for Lettig, but he suggested that we should look at perhaps designating them as a heritage asset which would open up uh, a route to um, getting various funding pots and um, other exterior finance that could help renovate and bring them back into some form of use because I don't know if people know that particular stretch from the castle hotel right the way up to the nationwide is the last single stretch of uninterrupted tamworth historic buildings the buildings themselves are medieval they've had um, brick frontages put onto them in uh, georgian and victorian times but they are timber framed medieval buildings the last that we have 
So they certainly deserve uh, to be brought into a heritage, um, into the heritage realm. And what I would like uh, to know is um, if we could consider referring this to cabinet so that they could investigate whether this is a possible, desirable and achievable. Um, I wonder if as a committee we could make that recommendation and, and ask cabinet to, uh, to look at this subject. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, as I'm sure you're aware that I think those buildings are outside of the Future High Street Fund project as a as a whole. I think it, I think I'm correct in. Right. Are you talking the existing nationwide or the new nationwide? Because depending on which buildings they are, they'll either fall within scope of Future High Street or outside scope. It's the existing nationwide that those so council owned three or four buildings. Um, okay. I was told that they do fall into the uh, Future High Street Fund. Thank you. Okay. Um, Anna. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, so the Market Street properties, which forms part of the Castle Gateway, they do form part of um, Future High Street's Fund. Um, they're Grade 2 listed, so it's from where Julian Florist were existing. They've obviously moved out and just down the road and then it's a, a couple of the properties next door now we've got the funding to refurbish renovate those properties so that already falls within the scope and that will be delivered as part of future high streets fund it's it's from, from from then onwards that we haven't got funding through future high streets funds so that that would be the bit that would need to be looked at i think um i would say that the Market Street properties that we are incorporating in Future High Streets Fund, which are Grade 2 listed, even as a Grade 2 listing, um, quite often falls outside heritage funding because they, they look for the, 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 the top priorities, which for them are Grade 1 or Grade 1 star. That's what they prioritise. So even a Grade 2 star isn't always seen as something that's preferable from a heritage perspective. That said, um, what you're describing, some of it falls within the project already and will be done anyway. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. So um, what you're saying to us is basically there's no point in doing this um, because it's already going to be done. Am I correct in that assumption? No, so what I said was um, you're talking about that, that whole uninterrupted um, street. What I'm saying is, is there's about three units that we are incorporating and has the funding that is obviously in the report Market Street Properties. To the tap, yeah. From Julian Florist. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not talking about the whole row. I'm only talking about that short section, as as the leader uh, said, between nationwide and the tap. That particular section, which I think is in in mortal danger, and um, I'm conscious that we need to to use it for some. I doubt that we can find a retail use for those shops at the moment, but we could. it could be used for some other heritage means or, or, or some other useful attraction that uh, would, um, would, would, would uh, enhance the town centre. Um, and I've, I'm very aware that we need cash to do that with, and heritage funding could be something that we look at and explore. I'm not saying that it's possibly... Um, that it's something that we can do, but we can at least look at it and ask the cabinet to explore whether this could be beneficial to those buildings. Thank you. Yeah, and if I could just clarify, so um, in terms of Market Street properties and where we've got to, obviously it's the project that's sort of sort of at the end of, the, of our list, if you like, because it's had the most problems. But we're almost at Reba Stage 2 now, looking at what's possible within those units. Um, and we, we are looking at retail, if possible, for those units. Um, and we've recently, only this week, looked at various options for the configuration internally of how those units might come forwards and how they might be occupied and used, and be functional, um, so that they contribute to the high street in a really meaningful way. So we are already looking at how we can deliver those. Um, and I know you said retail might not be possible, but we, we are working on the basis that it could be. Yeah, I think uh, the, the important thing is, 
whether whether retail is the answer or not or another use that doesn't negate the fact that these have been part of the future high street fund project since 2018 <laughs> so early 2000 and so late 2018 early 2019 they were included in that bid to government and that that's those properties are part of the reason we got the funding so so in terms of bringing them back into a usable condition that was the original outcome of the uh, of the future ice fund bid and they still sit within that so we've still got funding allocated to them uh, but as Anna suggested earlier they're coming towards the end of the project because they're the ones that are, are possibly the most complex uh, in terms of they're not necessarily the biggest but they're the most complex in terms of in terms of getting those back into a, a usable condition thanks um, Jeremy John if I can just finish off on this, uh, well, that's really um, it's positive to hear that you are looking at a possible commercial use. Uh, that would be great. I mean, in tandem with the the flexi buildings, which um, which can offer um, small retail um, opportunities, they may work well with that. Um, despite the fact that the flexi buildings, uh, however nice the ground floor is, uh, unfortunately going to be deprived of the roof that we spoke quite considerably about last night and that um, unfortunately I think the uh, the project has been spoiled because you haven't put a roof on it but that's all been spoken of yesterday it's really good to hear that those buildings are being looked at it's 40 years too late but um, we've got to do something now and with the demolition of the nationwide being imminent that is obviously going to impact on these buildings and there's going to be need there's going to need to be some sort of serious work done to safeguard their uh, the, the structures that uh, that are such an important part of Tamworth's heritage thank you chair thanks john any other questions comments ben just comment from me chair because all my questions have been answered um i just want to thank the officers um for, for their continued hard work it's good to see the projects on schedule and looking like uh, on budget at the minute um i think this is the for me as i said last night um this is the exciting part and this is where we see all your hard work come to fruition um so i'm really excited by it um and and i think uh, i think everybody in tamworth should be so um just yeah that's it for me thank you thanks ben uh, if there's no other comments, um, the recommendation is that the, our, the report is endorsed. And I'd like to say thanks to the officers and the leader for, for coming and presenting. And uh, I'm sure committee will welcome you back in June. So um, all those in favour of uh, endorsing that report? Wonderful. Thank you very much. And you guys are welcome to uh, disappear off. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could stay for further excitement. Okay, so uh, moving on with item 10, which is dual stream uh, recycling service update. Um, we have a couple of reports. Andrew, if I'll let you kick off, I think. Thank yeah, you. if I can, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the report this time is in is in two parts. Um, as we discussed at the last update, um, I'd like to update on the, the findings of the uh, post implementation review we took um, on the implementation of the service change. And I'd, I'd like to uh, to invite Nigel to talk through the uh, the relevant performance indicators, which is is probably the more interesting of the two. Um, I have put the first report to, to note, but also that it's taken in consideration with the second report because the two really go hand in glove um, with, with, with the contents. But post um, implementation of the, um, the, the, the service change, we found various um, uh, issues that, that needed addressing as part of it. Um, things such as the new rounds implemented um, were undertaken by, a, by, by a, an independent organisation, perhaps rather, rather than one that was really experienced in how we were delivering our service, and that impacted on the crew's <coughs> capacity and capability to deliver some of the new recycling rounds. Um, that then uh, led to a period of persistent non-completions, which impacted on residents. There was uh, wide frustration from ward councillors 
over a, a perceived lack of urgency in, in response to service requests where things hadn't gone right. Um, it appeared that sometimes the waste crews were unclear over what could be recycled, what couldn't be recycled. Um, and again, that caused um, some issues on site. Um, bin tagging, which was um, done to, uh, to, to, to help residents identify what was going on with, with the stuff in their bin, wasn't particularly well uh, communicated. Uh, and that caused significant sort of uh, anger amongst residents as to what, why has my bin been tagged. Um, and again, the, the, the positive communications that, that, that took place prior to the new service going in were, were lost because of, of, of the, um, the sort of uh, residents' comments um, with, within the service during the implementation. So what did we learn from that? Um, the, the, the table on um, sort of page 22 and 23 um, of the report is, is really the, the main findings. I'm, I'm not going to go through it in detail because a lot of it is picked up in, in, the, in the performance report. But things such as the, the, the round review, um, that was found out. It, the new service took longer. Um, so there is um, a, a project underway to review all the rounds. Um, I'll let Nigel speak on that, but that is now bringing things back into, into kilter. So the, the early stages of, of, of non-completions have been um, completely overcome. The service is running, running well. Uh, public information campaign, um, that needed to be um, reviewed. And any further service changes that, that we have is absolutely critical, having a robust comms strategy. That's what it's about. There, there were some... Um, there were some authorised press, unauthorised press releases that were put out, which exacerbated the situation. It should have come through in one focus point, common message. Everybody understands it, um, and you know, even if you don't like what's happening, if you know about it, that's that, that's ninety percent of the uh, of, of, of the problem. Um, staffing: were, the, the service had considerable pressure around availability of drivers. Um, it's a national problem. It isn't just a local issue. Um, but there is now a, um, a, a grow their own, the service is growing its own HGV drivers, which is a really positive move. So that's going to, um, to, to, to help out in the future. Um, big one for me is, is data, and I think this committee picked it up a time before last, that um, th th there wasn't a lot of data available. Uh, so um, that's now been, um, been honed, and there is a lot more usable data available, which I'll, 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 let, I'll let Nigel speak to. And another one of the, probably the fundamental things, whilst um, the, 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 the MRF, the people we take our, our recycled material to, uh, they were also going through a change as well as a service. They were going from single stream um, co-mingle collection to a dual stream. And um, that led to significant waiting times. Uh, unfortunately, they were our contracted contractor. Um, and it took them a while to, uh, to, to get into the same mindset as, as we did. That is now, um, now sort of in train, and uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no, um, there's no issues with that now. They're, they're, they're back into, in, into where they need to be. Um, on page 25, there is a, a table of, of activity, but I think that is really picked up in, um, in the report, the performance report you're going to, um, you're going to consider in, in a moment. So I uh, say, so in reality, I think the, the post implementation, yes, there were some issues. Um, I believe they've all been picked up. Then they've all either been addressed or in the process of being addressed as we, as we move forward, which is, is positive. And I think in, you know, in general, um, the service does what it, what it says it would. It collects bins, it collects bags, it collects good quality recycling. Um, and I think the, the original outcome of this was to improve our quality of recycling. It, it, it has done. Um, but I'll probably nothing more for me to say. Um, I'd like to pass over to, uh, to, to Nigel and Vicky to, to take us through the, uh, the performance update and the data update. Thank thank Andrew and I was just going to say thanks, Andrew. And uh, I think I think as you rightly say, it's important to take that report in conjunction with with the data and the report Nigel's got. So uh, yeah, Nigel, over to you. Yep. Thank you, Andrew, and um, thank you, Chair, and thank you for 
the invite to give you a, a further update on the service. Um, I'm going to take you through the key points in my report and also the attached appendix which um, contains all the data. As Andrew mentioned, um, service re reliability has been firmly re-established um, following the, the challenging uh, rollout period and the general direction of the service um, and the key, key performance indicators is, is really quite positive now. Um, all our rounds are being completed on time unless we have an operational issue such as a breakdown or, or bad weather. Um, we're currently operating on an average of 8.8 .8 recycling crews per day. In practice that means we have 8 some day and 9 on other days. Um, but um, following the, the, a recent round review, we think we've got sufficient headroom now to reduce the average number of crews down to uh, eight and a half a day, which is in line with the um, original budget for the service. Um, this, this has happened really because all the crews have now got used to the new trucks, they've gotten used to new rounds and used to the new collection methodology and have speeded up a bit. So um, that little bit of um, capacity in the system, uh, those changes are going to be made on Monday. So, um, and obviously we're going to monitor very, very closely to make sure um, we don't go back to sort of any sort of service failure. So it'll be watched very, very closely. But there's a lot of confidence there that we can make that change and there'll obviously be a saving in the operational budget for doing that in terms of getting back online. Um, been a real steady decrease in the number of service failures such as missed bins because again everything has now bedded in. The crews know the rounds, they know where the assisted collections are. Um, and formal complaints about the service were dropped from a high of uh, 22 in June. I think we only had one in October so that's, uh, that's a very good uh, trend to be on and just recently um, we had the Christmas and New Year collections and um, to be honest everything went according to plan everything was done on the correct day um, I'm not aware of any service failures there and um, you know it was um, it was, it was um, a complete success um, with resident participation is, is high which is very encouraging um, most properties are presenting both a bin for the glass cans and plastic and a bag for the paper and card. We've actually had quite a lot of demand for additional bags with, um, with about one in 10 properties um, requesting the extra capacity. Number of rejected bins is, is falling. Um, sounds a lot, 430 bins per week, um, but that's only about 1.2% of the total. Um, main rejection for bins seems to be the still residents putting a bit of paper and card into the bin. So we want to try and work on that through our comms and the use of our recycling um, officers. But we get very few bags rejected. Um, it's probably very easy for the crew to see if there's something in the bag that shouldn't be. And they will try and tidy that bag up if someone puts a plastic bottle in there or something. Because at the end of the day, we want to try and avoid as many rejections as possible. The dry recycling rate in the first two quarters has dipped a bit compared to last year, but it is a bit early to draw any firm conclusions. Uh, we really need the data for a full year because you do get variations from one year to the next. Um, headline recycling rate is showing a bigger drop than last year, um, but because that, that's really because it takes into consideration um, the, the recycling we get from garden waste and that fell off quite a lot through the summer if you will remember I know it's cold now but we did have some hot weather and um, the grass stopped growing so we were quite a few tons down to previous years and there's also the tonnage for residual waste in the black bin and recycling compared to last year there's been quite a big drop in both of those waste streams um, this was expected because um, we've obviously come out of um, sort of the lockdowns that were happening over the last two years. Um, a lot of people now are obviously going back to work and, and schools and, and, and so it was, it was expected that would happen. And we're also watching the data very closely because obviously we've got a cost of living crisis at the moment. Uh, is that going to affect people's purchasing patterns? And that also has a, um, a, a knock-on effect with waste. There is a correlation sort of between GDP and waste arisings, but um, we're watching that carefully. And as Andrew mentioned, probably the, one of the most encouraging um, bits of news to come out 
is the quality of the material. Um, the fibre collected in the in the bag, extremely low contamination. Um, we've been complimented on it by um, by the um, the merchants who buy it off us. It's as pure a paper and card as, as I've ever seen in, in all the years I've been working in the industry. Um, as I said earlier, it's, it's easier for the crews to find anything in there. Um, and, he, and, the, and the blue, the, the contamination rate in the blue bin is also has improved considerably. Probably because there's less material in there now, um, uh, we can sort of see if there is contamination in there. But um, I think we've only we've only had one load rejected since May, and that was an operational error. Uh, we still had some residual waste on a truck and went out and collect some recycling. And of course, when it got to the plant, you've got um, you've got that residual waste on board, and they rejected it. But we've had no rejections from normal recycling going into the facility. Um, Pleased to say our financial performance is solid. Um, we've had some very good income from the sale of um, commodities during the first two quarters because the quality is good. We're getting good prices for it. The merchants are finding markets for it. Um, we think the quarter three will dip a bit because um, obviously with the cost of living crisis and everything, there's been um, less demand for materials, but um, we're just sort of uh, number crunching that for the third quarter. Um, we're hoping that will break even this year. Um, if there are any overspends or reduced income throughout the rest of the year, the Joint Waste Service does have a healthy reserve that we could tap into. I think it's something like 800k at the moment. So there is money there if, if we go slightly over budget. Um, the last meeting you asked for some feedback on the longevity of the bags. Um, just to report that we're not experiencing any significant issues. We've had to replace some for broken handles, ro um, torn seams. Um, and we've also spoken to Newcastle and Stafford who've been using the bags for, I think it's a couple of years now. And they've sort of given us a very similar scenario. Um, obviously they have a shorter life than a bin. Um, and we're obviously, um, we do, we're looking to get some replacements to top up stocks at the moment, but, um, but no, um, there's no significant issues there. And sort of finally, I wanted to tell you a bit about some several, several important projects that are underway on waste. Um, we're continuing to complete the migration of uh, our flats and HMOs onto the new service. Um, it's a big project. We've got, um, Several hundred, well, I think we've got 3,000 properties in total across the two districts that have some sort of communal shared storage facilities. So they're all having to be inspected, um, been swapped over, communications, then sort of helping the residents to move on to the service. Um, so that's progressing. We've got to find a solution for um, high rise flats in both Tamworth and Litchfield. We haven't quite cracked that one yet, but we are working on it. Another project that's ongoing at the moment, um, we're looking at the future operating model for the Joint Waste Service, um, just to make sure um, we're, we're taking advantage of all opportunities out there. So that's ongoing. Andrew mentioned the round review. Um, we've done a round review on the recycling service. Um, to sort of uh, say improve that efficiency. We'll also want to look at the residual rounds and also um, I don't, probably don't need to tell you there's an awful lot of uh, housing growth going on in, in Tamworth and Litchfield. All of those have an impact on our rounds so we have to be constantly looking at the way we adopt or bring new properties onto those. Um, Looking at options proposals, um, you may be aware that, um, for, sorry for food waste, um, it's an ambition of the government in their waste strategy to uh, mandate local authorities to, um, to bring in weekly collections of food waste for all residents. So we're starting to have a look at that. We're, obviously, if it happens, we're going to need trucks, we're going to need more people, uh, we're going to need disposal facilities. We've got to find a way to get residents to use that service. So early work is starting on that. Um, fleet review and procurement. Um, we've just um, agreed a two-year extension with our current fleet providers, a company called SFS Limited. We're going to use that two years to look forward to what we do with the fleet. As mentioned, food waste trucks we'll need, but also the carbon agenda. 
um, what we can do about moving away from fossil fuels and starting to use electric trucks. It's all in the, its infancy at the moment. It may not be electric trucks for the long, long term, it might be hydrogen, but we're starting to look at that. Um, has implications for the depot if you've got to start charging trucks, you know, substations, charging points. There's an awful lot of work to be done there. Work, workforce planning, again Andrew mentioned that we're training our own loaders to become drivers, successfully managed to train five uh, members of staff now who've got a Class C licence, another three are in the pipeline. Um, we have struggled to recruit from the outside or the private sector and from other local authorities and it put us a lot under a lot of pressure in the summer but um, really pleased to say that um, we're actually up to establishment now on all posts I haven't got any vacancies which is probably the first time I can remember that in probably 10 or 12 years so, um, so that means it does improve the resilience of the service we're relying on agency staff a lot less um, and another piece of work that's going on at the moment is review of the commercial waste service. That largely affects Litchfield because they've traditionally offered um, trade, ref trade refuse and trade recycling services to their businesses. But we have spread a little bit into Tamworth now and we do offer that service to, to some businesses in the area. I'll obviously keep you updated on the progress of these projects if I get invited to future meetings. I'm happy to, uh, happy to take any questions. Thanks, thanks, Nigel. Um, and absolutely, you're uh, you're welcome back on a quarterly basis at the moment. <laughs> um, I've I've got a couple of questions. Um, I'm just looking at the joint waste recycling tonnage comparison graph, and it's it's great to see these graphs. They um, I thank think Vicky for those. Well, thank, thank you, Vicky. It's the, they are really, uh, they're really useful. Um, so I'm just trying to, I just want to explore it a little bit because we've got uh, 2021, 21, 22, which are very, very, they're overlaid on each other basically. Um, and then we have this um, significantly less for, uh, for, for, for last year, this year. This year. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I'm buying that that's all COVID, COVID related. I think it might be useful if we had sort of 1920 or 1819 on, on there. And that might give us a, perhaps a, a more solid picture of what's going on. Um, obviously, that was before COVID. So we should be able to get a good Yes. I mean, have, have you got any other comments on that graph at all? Because I'm just, there's a significant difference there. We're, to be honest, um, that's being reflected across the whole of. Sorry. It's been reflected across all local authorities. Um, we regularly share our data with the other Staffordshire authorities. Uh, we're members of the Joint Waste Board. They've all seen the similar um, drop off. Okay. It's, an, it's a national um, national picture. Um, whether it's all down to COVID, I don't think anybody can, can, can say completely, but say during those two years, um, a lot of people were at home. Children were being educated at home. So um, again, probably let's see. Let's see how the trend continues for the rest of the year. And I'm sure we can get you another couple of lines put on the graph for previous years. So we can we can have a look at that for you. I, th I think that would be useful because okay. I think that might give us a, a, okay. a fuller a fuller picture. But you are seeing the same pattern with the residual as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, just anecdotally, um, I've done a little bit of a controlled experimentation at home with uh, with with my blue bag um i know at some meetings ago uh, we, we sort of explored how the service was going to to operate as far as putting your blue bin out at the same time as your blue bag for for ease of of, of use for oper for the operators i've just been putting a blue bag out more more often than a the, with the bin and that's had no no issues with the uh, with the operators at all. So it's just an anecdotal uh, a bit of information. Um, other members have any? John. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for that report. Excellent, excellent report. And I'm delighted to hear that you didn't have too many problems over Christmas. I must admit, I was I was one who thought that that was going to be a problem, but 
obviously from what you're saying uh, it went pretty smoothly and that's uh, and that's good and it's good to hear that the, the system has bedded down and um, has become sort of um, acceptable to most people and um, I'm sure you're still going to get some people who moan about it um, that's just the nature of the beast but uh, um, you say you're getting roughly 400 bins I missed where it was per per week. per week so are these bins being tagged yes so the homeowner knows precisely why they're being rejected and not taken they're also being reported on our in-cab system as well, so we get the information fed back to the back office. Um, we've got some recycling officer capacity. Um, we try and get recycling officers out to visit residents um, who put bit wrong materials mm. in the bin. But obviously, with those sort of numbers and only having a couple of officers, it's very difficult to um, to visit everyone. We're looking at a sort of um, letter-based system now. So, um, with it with it coming in on the Bartek system, um, capture that and hopefully automatically generate friendly letters to go out to residents mm. and say, look, sorry, we've had to reject your bin today because it contained X, Y, and Z to try yeah. and um, sort of help them to, uh, to get it right next time. Are you experiencing any confrontation with unhappy people who are obviously demanding you take it and all that sort of thing? Does that happen? Um, it's died down now, obviously, with the service change. Uh, and Andrew mentioned, obviously, the uh, press releases and things like that over the bag. And, and Resi don't, no, nobody likes change anyway, but mm. it's generally settled down. And as I say, participation's good, quality's good. Um, so we're getting, we don't get that many complaints now about the changing methodology. I think it's it settled down. Thanks. I was here when uh, we moved to alternate weekly collections back in 2004. If you remember, we used to have a weekly black bin and then we bought in recycling. That was probably worse, I think, when we moved to fortnightly collections. I think even the, the cleaners on the way out of Miami and House used to tell me off and say, well, this is mad and <laughs> can we bring this system in? But, uh, but now I think. Um, I think it's. Oh, we collect. Um, let's get it right now. Um, it's fourteen thousand a day, so something like. Um, four hundred out of fourteen. Ninety thousand. Ninety thousand, but uh, it's forty-five thousand a week because we split north and south. Four hundred of which are being. Yeah. So it's just so it's about rejected. one point one point one point two percent. Yeah. So. Well, hopefully we can keep that figure coming down, yes. down, down. Um, if I may, just one very, very quick point. It's just something I found. You've had one load rejected. Yes. What do you do with it? Um, um, I've got this vision in my head of you putting the, the, the truck out, emptying it, and lots of people piling in to whip out all of the... the the offending articles. What do you do with that? Um, because of health and safety restrictions, people aren't allowed to go into the. Mm, the that's waste. What no, so uh, that goes off for energy from um, to the energy from waste plants. So picked up and taken to four ashes. So it's um, just so it's burned. So yeah. there is some return from it in that uh, there will be energy gains yeah, from it. But that was just just one error. But we're, we're so pleased. I think we were running at something like twenty five thirty um, loads being rejected a year. So yeah. we need to go down. It, it's really zero now it was just an operational error yeah. but um, we're really pleased because uh, we were constantly well, being dragged down to the MRF to explain why yeah. the, the mm. waste wasn't up to standard so um, and it's really improved the relationship with the operator as well we're delivering them good stuff they, they can now pass it on to the markets yeah. and we get a good return on income thank you very much thank you chair thank you Mich Michelle thank you and yeah, I think it's really, really good to see such a data-heavy report. The amount of times we sit here going, give us more data, and you've given us loads of data, which is great, but I'm going to ask for some more. So is it possible to get kind of these figures by route to actually understand kind of which areas are producing certain amounts of waste? Where is there a particular area that we need to be doing more targeting on, i.e., I, I keep saying as councillors, we're advocates for what we're doing. We're about to start going out knocking doors in the next few weeks, I'm sure, again, and continue that process. It's again, it's the type of thing that people come up with and say, What about bins? What about this? And actually, if we can have those kind of key facts and stats, it's really because I think it's the type of thing that keeps going. And clearly, whilst there's been a bit of an uplift, we want that to go down. 
let's kind of use that information but I think generally from a kind of committee perspective it's really useful just to understand as much of the narrative and the fact this looks like it's there I'm hoping it's not hours of work of somebody sitting on the key <laughs> if you tell me it is and that's totally different but I think it'd be a really nice thing to have so that was my first yeah. question I've got a second okay. one thanks we are we are all looking to see whether there's something we can do ward by ward. But the problem is the trucks don't rest, aren't just restricted to that ward area. They wander across the uh, those internal boundaries. Um, yeah, that's why I thought by route might be easier. Yes. Be a bit of a map of but then also you might have carryover from the previous day from a different area so it's a little, can we can we come back to the next meeting with some suggestions what we may or may not be able to do but understand why it's important to drill down to um to that but but by obviously using our in cab technology we are getting reports back on a property by property basis because they'll report those properties um a that don't put a recycling bin out uh, non-presentation and also those that, that, that put the wrong materials in. So we are getting some very drilled down data, but obviously not a complete overall picture. Just quickly, Michelle, before I know you've got further questions, but just on that point, I think um, I think Michelle makes a very good point asking for more, more data. I don't think you can have too much really. Um, providing it's it's easily to to get hold of um but i think i'm sure as, as, as the service progresses you'll you'll find easier ways and it will become more more automated so yeah i think if you can look at that thank you, yeah. thank you. thanks and then the next one's also on data as well and i just wonder whether or not as part of this there's any way of looking at kind of the climate change impacts of sort of in terms of amounts of CO2 etc that's been done I know it is partly through the climate change side of things but for example again from a stats perspective if a load is rejected and sent to energy from waste even though it is producing energy which is positive on the other hand there's still a kind of CO2 emission through that extra burning so is there any way of linking that in and actually showing that information either through ourselves or through kind of before ashes thanks can i just make a comment on that as well i think i think again michelle makes a good point i would imagine it's quite very difficult to uh, to get hold of that data but it would be it would be most interesting actually uh, that all the good work from from a recycling point of view isn't offset by by a bad load let's say some of the committees that um, are looking at waste holistically are sort of working on waste metrics that would measure that. Um, at the moment, we're not really in a position to do that, but we'll obviously um, watch the emerging national picture and see what we can sort of uh, pick up on. I did mention the trucks earlier uh, in terms of looking at decarbonisation. That might be something that we can start looking at and reporting on. That's probably an easier subject to pick at this stage rather than the complete cycle chain of waste. It's an awful lot of moving parts, but... Um, Nice to have a challenge, and um, as I say, we'll keep moving forward and see what data we can get for you on that issue. Uh, Michelle, you? Okay. Ben. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to say um, it's good to see, despite the initial teething problems that the service had, that it's having the desired effect and, and doing what it's out to do. I've got a couple of questions. One was around, you said about um, you've given out some extra blue bags that people have asked for. Is that being communicated out to people? Because that's still one of the things that I'm being asked about quite a lot is the bags aren't big enough. Um, it, uh, uh, are we communicating that out to residents that they're, they, if they want one, they can have another one? Is that? We haven't openly publicised it at the moment. We still... We, we sort of our stock of spare bags is running down at the moment and we're looking to source some additional bags to top up the supply um, if we were to publicize it there's a danger we could very very quickly run out of that stock yeah. um, so we need to evaluate it and also the leading times for getting the bags like most things that unfortunately they're not made in this country yeah. so yeah you've got shipping times etc yeah. but um, I think once we sorted out what we're going to do with the um, replacement stock 
um, we should be able to sort of start letting residents know. Um, if someone does ring up for a bag, it, yep. we do we do we do get that to them. Even had a had ward councillors come in and pick up a couple of hundred and dish them out to some of the residents. But we've also got to be mindful. We've got a house building program. Yep. I don't want to run out of bags for those properties because that would really cause a problem. Um, what we do take and what we successfully did at Christmas. Um, if people do put side cardboard out, we took all of that off the streets, yep. um, cleared that up. So if someone does have a big whatever delivered and they've got a big box, the crews have been trained to take that so and not to leave it. I'm aware other authorities um, who did move to dual stream collections um, at the same time as us don't collect side cardboard. They will only collect what's in the bag, whereas we've given the commitment that we will collect um, side cardboard. <laughs> I am going to slightly contradict my, my colleague. Um, part of the Christmas campaign um, in the early stages was actually, if you need extra capacity, contact us, and you will you, you can have another bag. Okay. So, has it been communicated? Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it's something area that we need to look at more closely to yep. make sure that message is out there, um, you know, all, all the time. Because let's face it, the more quality stuff we get, the better. Yeah, and 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 on that then. So you were saying about the the the, the side bits if they if it they've got too much of their bag with the weather that we've been having it's been quite wet it's been quite cold does that affect the the quality of the the recycler is, is that an issue if it does get wet it does get damp because obviously the idea with the bags is that it doesn't we have to meet what's known as an input specification at the the mer i think it's 10 or 12 percent moisture content on the card um, obviously we get rainy days some heavy rain um but we also get some dry days, so um, it tends to get blended in and mixed in. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, um, they did some testing on the, um, the moisture content, I think, in November. I think we had a very wet period around about then, and we won under the tolerances. The, the, the real risk, obviously, if car gets too wet is not so much at the MRF, it's whether we can physically pick it up yeah. off the pavement yeah. if it starts, <laughs> becomes a, a mush. But we had a lot of rain over the... Well, over the last few weeks, and um, we've had no reports from the crews have been struggling. Um, they do their very best to obviously clear it up. Um, so it's, it's more of a handling issue uh, rather than a rejection at the plant situation at the moment. Okay. Um, and then, Ben, can I, can I just interject slightly yeah. and just, just bring back to your, uh, your first comment, because I just wanted to, to make a point. Um, I think it's important that we that we don't run out of bags, additional bags to be able to give to, to, uh, to residents. Um, residents have had to go through change um, and I would feel very uncomfortable if we were in a situation where we were running out of um, uh, additional bags that were available for, for residents. I think we really, you know, I can't stress that, that enough really and I think committee would, uh, would support that. That's all right. and, and then sort of on the flip side of the bag, so when we, there was a lot of talk previously when the service was, was coming in about the fact that a lot of houses had got additional blue bins that weren't going to be required um, once, once the service came in. Um, can you just give me an update on, on what the situation has been with that? Have we been taking back the additional blue bins if people are asking or, or what, what are the sort of options? And then if we are taking them back, what's happening to them? Are they then going to be recycled themselves and, and sold on, etc.? Any resident who wants to return um, the blue bin, a second blue bin or third blue bin, we'll go and pick it up for them. We'll bring it back to the yard. If it's still in pretty good order, we'll look to refurb it. Although some residents, um, particularly new build properties, um, expect a brand new bin for the property so we do have one or two issues with people saying they won't accept a, a second hand bin but um no it's um we, we'll take them back we'll collect them um i don't think we had that many have we vicky really it's um people are sort of stuck with with what they've got so so, so again has that been communicated out that if people want to return the bins they can do um it is part of the part it, of the comms is, package yeah. yes so. right. That's great. And, and then just one, one final thing from me. Um, you were saying about the, um, you, you've had, was it 400 bins a week that, that haven't been collected? Are, are, we, are you seeing many repeat offenders with that or are these new each week? 
Um, we do see do some we repeat offenders, yes, and that's why we're going to use the letter system mm -hmm. now, sort of, you know, first letter, sort of a friendly approach, and then maybe the second letter says, look, come on, we really need you to, <laughs> uh, otherwise the bin's just going to be left on the pavement, and that then becomes uh, an issue in the street, doesn't it? So, yeah. and mm -hmm. sort of, we do, when we're sort of getting repeat offenders, we do get the recycling officers out to visit and knock doors, because it's always better to go and talk to somebody than sending what always looks like an official letter through, mm -hmm. through the post so by going out and they may they may misunderstand the letter as well so going out to help people um, to go th the recycling officers will go through the bin if necessary to say that can go in that can't that can that can't so to try and give them that level of help that's it really I, mean, I could ask loads more questions but, um, on, on recycling but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make I'm just going to explore this this number of blue bags a little bit further again because it does mention it in the report um, with regard to decision needs to be made soon rather than later and how how we can influence and I'm, hopefully Andrew might be able to sort of offer some some advice here with regard to, to um, I think we could make a recommendation into cabinet, but I assume that would be the, the appropriate route. I, I think, Chair, the, the actual ordering of bags is, is literally an operational issue. So um, it wouldn't need a cabinet endorsement to do. Um, the request has already been made from the waste team to both chief executives um, as to, is this OK? okay. Um, we discussed it yesterday. So that will now feed down into the team. And uh, so I, I don't anticipate it being a problem. If Ex that gives committee enough reassurance. I, th I, th I think it does. Th th thank you for that. Um, any other questions or comments from members on the report? No? Excellent. So I think um, our recommendation is to endorse the report. Um, I think, uh, or both reports. Um, it's good. It's just to sum up, I think it's good to see the the data that has been uh, collected. I think it's I think it's um, pleasing to see the general um, trend and the performance. And yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you again um, soonish. Okay. So, uh, all those in favour endorsing the report. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you all. And you you're welcome to go or, or stay. <laughs>
there's there's quite a few quite a bit of work to do mm. um, we had sort of three areas that we wanted to focus on um, so I, w- I would anticipate that this might be something that might run past the end of this yeah this yeah. this year um, and and sort of into the next um, year of, of meetings so um, hopefully we, we can all continue to uh, to work on that because I think it's quite a big piece of work um, and hopefully we'll have some good outcomes from it so. excellent Th- thank you um, the other working group, which is travellers, which is something that we were setting up with uh, health and wellbeing scrutiny. Um, I, I haven't got any further feedback than what was sort of reported back at the last meeting. So um, I'll pick that up with the with the chair of health and wellbeing as uh, uh, in the in the forthcoming weeks. Um, item thirteen is our committee work plan and uh, the next meeting is the 23rd of March um, and we've got uh, a number of items as we always have a nut packed program um, coming to us so we've got uh, Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan which is which is something that we look at on a, uh, a yearly basis um, something I've asked to be brought forward is a, is a town hall and the the plans for for that that's something i think that was part of reset and recovery and obviously we're using the town hall a lot more um or all the while now so um i think it's worth us exploring where exactly we are on on that with uh, with the um obviously the budget coming forward and and, and what's going to be completed in the in the town hall um the we have a Staffordshire Sustainability Board update, which includes Staffordshire EV charging strategy and Staffordshire Carbon Communication Plan, which is on the forward plan, um, and it's appropriate for us, I think, to look at that. And I want to also explore our own borough EV uh, plans that were uh, um, that we move forward with and see if we have actually moved forward with them because I don't know at the moment. Um, the other item I'd like to explore if it's available is the um, there is a report coming on the um, festival that was that we had in in the Castle Grounds uh, last year. Um, and I think it's worth us looking at that and seeing. Uh, there's no, I haven't seen a report yet, but I know there's one uh, in 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 plan. Um, so if if uh, if members are happy for that to be included, whether it's available at that meeting or not, we, we I don't know at the moment. But it can go on the work plan as as, as being brought forward as and when. Um, is there anything else, anybody? John. <coughs> Thank you, Jim. I wonder if uh, in, a, in a future meeting we can have a look at the assembly rooms. Um, I've been uh, a frequent visitor over we, uh, recent weeks and months. Uh, Banto was the last one, which was fantastic, absolutely fantastic, which... Uh, Councillor Farrell did a superb job, and everyone involved with it. It was probably one of the best evenings I've ever enjoyed at there. But there are some issues with the assembly rooms, I think, that need to be addressed. Um, on the night I went, three of the ladies' toilets were out of action. They were not being used. This is in a room where there are over four, 500 people, lots of women and girls, to have three toilets out of commission I think is a serious problem I think there are problems with the bars I don't think they work very well and um, a, a number of issues around the, the building I think we could do with having a chat if possible with the um, with the person who runs the, the thing just to iron out to see if there are any problems that we can address um, and if we can um, offer any advice or um, help to get the, the place running even more smoothly. Um, I think that would be something that we could uh, make a good contribution to. 
I Thank think, you, Joe. Th- thanks, John. I think I think that's I think that's fair comment, and uh, I'll, um, whether it will be something we can look at in at our next meeting in March, I, I don't know. But certainly, I'll, I'll make um, make some inquiries to see who we need to uh, to get, and uh, um, uh, possibly a report or even just a um, a briefing, let's say. So yeah, I think that's fair enough. One thing I did miss off was uh, for. For next meeting is the annual report for for our committee, um, so that will be a be a draft for us to comment on um, before it goes to full council in the in the new new term, so to speak. Um, so it will be a busy meeting again, and you never know we might have something else come up and uh, another meeting scheduled, but who knows, hey. Um, Okay, I think that's that's our work done for this evening. So uh, thanks, thanks all. I think it's uh, I think it's I don't know what time it is. Is it just before eight? Seven thirty-six. It, it, it's slightly early, but um, if anybody wants to hang around, um, so thank thanks all, and um, wish you uh, all good night. Thank you.